Dr. A. Huh? Tiff. Thought you were sleeping the again. Tele the teleprompter went off. Oh, please. When my oldest son turned 18, I walked in, I said, Andrew, you're 18 now. Don't have to listen to me. Don't have to go to church. Follow your own rules. Uh, of course, if you do, Dr. Ray? of course, if you do, you can't live here. <laughs> exactly. So, Good job. here's what the parent says. My 20-year-old son has returned <laughs> home from college for the summer and is arguing that he is old enough to decide whether or not to attend Mass. Now, he's over 18, you know. Sure. He also tells us he has pretty much stopped going to Mass at school. Okay, it's an, it's not, this is not a 9-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. A 20-year-old, young mm -hmm. adult, way at college, comes back. I haven't been going to Mass. What are you making me go in the summertime for? Because you live in my house. It's like, and again, I say it all the time. My house, my rules. You don't have to live here after you're 18. Like you started off, that was perfect. I say it all the time to parents. I say, biggest thing is people have to learn consequences for actions. And so you're paying for their school. You're paying for them to have food and water every day. Over 18, you've done what you can do for your kids. Now, if they want to come home, okay, these are the rules. You know, you have rules in my house. I'm too. an adult. Exactly. So go ahead and pay your own house and get your own food and do it somewhere else. But as long as you live here, these are the rules. Now, it's interesting. He won't like me. I know. That's, isn't that the thing that often parents want to be liked all the time? That doesn't mean you go around and you're a jerk. But it does mean you do have some rules and, and they'll respect that, huh? I always often have dealt with parents that have, these are the rules, they're respected. As long as they're not nuts about things, about I hate you and if you do this, you're a bad person. In no way are we talking that you're not loved or respected or not welcome in my house. But in my house, this is what happens. You have to go to church on Sunday. Okay, you make me go to church, but I'll just stand there and I'll stare at Fine. you and I'll daydream the whole time yeah. about how the Cleveland Browns could call a draw play on third and 12. Exactly. And again, though, it does, like, my thing is at least they're there. Like often, I think when a person's at least present, something can happen to them. You know, the priest might say something, but God's Holy Spirit's always working. And so even if they're there and they're hearing God's Holy Word, God's Word has power to change people. So sometimes just getting them there is half the battle. Then it's God's duty, God's job, to bring them to a deeper conversion. What about the kid who's at college who doesn't go? You mm -hmm. know he doesn't go. Sure. You're paying for his college. Mm -hmm. Have you ever advised parents to say, this is part of my terms. You have to go to Mass. I want the bulletin signed by the priest yeah. every week. Never done that. It's a, it's, well, it's a thought. But <laughs> I was a college chaplain for seven years. And I used to love it because most of the kids I got never went to church at all. But again, as a chaplain, what I would do is I would actually go to every dorm room. I would say, hey, listen, I want to see you. I did more confirmations in college because a lot of these kids didn't want to be confirmed because they never went to church when they, were, uh, when they went earlier. But now they got it in a way it was now their faith. And so often, that's why if you get, you know, that's why to me, one of the most important things in college campuses is that you have great campus ministry and campus ministry that reaches out to young people and says God loves you and wants to come back because again once they're 18 and out of the house now we as a church got to become the parents if you will and reach out to these people but again you can't make them go to church when they're when they're 18 but there are consequences whether they live in your house or not. I just say it's very simple. My house. What if he's in my house and he just refuses? That's then, it. I'm okay. a single mom. He's not going to get oh, up. Oh, doesn't that happen all the time? And the mothers say, okay, I can't do anything about it. Are you sure as heck can? You call the police and you have that kid taken out of your house. Because you love him. Spoken, spoken like a true father, huh? Yeah, I just think that... Since when do kids start telling parents this is the way life is going to be? Yeah, but we're dealing with religion here. We're dealing with mass. We're sure. not dealing with eating your vegetables. We're not dealing with, with which car you're going to drive. This is, this is the spiritual thing. We've got to be delicate. spiritual is the most important part of a person. And when to somehow, somewhere, that we say this is the, what's most important. And again, the spiritual is more than just going to mass, the and all that stuff, of course. But it's the minimum. It's even like when the church tells us, okay, children of the living God, you must, under penalty of mortal sin, meaning you go to hell forever, go to mass every Sunday. You must. 
Why? It's kind of bossy. It's very bossy because it's a commandment of God. Commandments by definition have consequences. Gee, God, the universe said, do this and live, don't do it and die. So there are consequences. So when I'm talking about love and all this stuff, we are talking about loving people, but challenging them and saying, okay, so like I often taught when I was at prep, the greatest thing I can tell you is there's consequences for your actions. Missing mass, doing things, there's eternal consequences for your actions. And I have to tell you that because the God of the universe says, this is the way things are going to be. And I, if I have to make it happen, I'm going to make it happen. Absolutely. I'm going to love you enough that like, if you come home and you're on drugs, I'm going to do everything in my power to get you off those drugs because I love you. If you're at home and say, I'm not going to church, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you go to church because I love you. Strength is one of the greatest characteristics we have as a Christian. Christianity is not weakness, it's strength. The spirit that God has given us is no cowardly spirit, but one that makes us strong, loving, and wise. How much we need the Holy Spirit when we're dealing with our college kids to make us strong, loving, and wise. All three things are necessary, but we deal from our strength when it comes to Christianity, not just out of our weakness. 18, 20, 22, 24. Those are just numbers, aren't they, Father Larry? They, they don't mean a whole lot if that child lives in your home. Those are just numbers. Mm -hmm.